Hi, my name is Suzanne Clark, and I am an assistant instructor in the Medical Laboratory Science Program at BCIT. And I specifically teach into the microbiology course. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to work through a sputum culture that's been identified as having Haemophilus influenzae. So let's get started. The first thing I do is put the plates side by side in front of me. And I always lift up the blood and the chocolate side by side. And that's to compare the growth requirements. Remember that Haemophilus requires uh, enriched uh, conditions, not only the media, but the CO2. And it doesn't grow well on a blood auger plate without the help of a staph streak. So side by side, you should be able to determine if there is a colony growing in abundance on the chocolate plate that you don't see in similar size on the blood plate. When I look at these two plates, I see this colony right here. It's a medium sized gray or tan colony that's growing in the, at, at least as a plus three amount of growth. When I look on the blood auger plate, I don't see anything that looks like that medium sized colony, tan gray. The only things I see mostly on that plate are alpha hemolytic organisms and some non-hemolytic organisms. Now if I was suspicious about any of those alpha hemolytic organisms being a possible concave or more wet looking colony, I would at least do a colony smear today. If it's showing gram-positive cocci in very pleomorphic forms, I would probably assume it's going to be a viridens and I wouldn't do anything with that colony. So when I'm correlating the growth between the plates, that gray tan colony is not on the blood. It's present in good amounts on the chocolate. There's no growth on the MAC. So I'm going to assume that that colony on my chocolate could be Haemophilus. And I start with touching the colony that I will have circled, just barely touching it, delivering it to the plate, and then streaking in four directions for isolation. It's important not to over inoculate this plate, so I'm going to flip my loop to do quadrants three and four. The staff streak is just barely touched as well with your loop. And I'm going to show you the X style where we put two lines across the plate, making four sections of a pie. Making sure you get the staff streak through the quadrants. that plate gets incubated in CO2. The next test to do is the porphyrin with a chocolate plate purity plate. Porphyrin can be inoculated with a swab. It has to be a heavy growth. So you do need a few, you do need to fit, take a few colonies. When you're using a swab, 
be very careful that you don't touch any other colonies on the plate that don't look like the Haemophilus colony. The porphyrin has to be milky, a skim milk consistency. So that should be fine. And that goes into ambient. I take a loop full of that porphyrin substrate and I inoculate the chocolate purity plate. And streak four ways to get isolation. In this case, I'm going to use the two loop method because the porphyrin tube is very heavy and I want to get isolated colonies to prove that my ALA is pure. And just as my paper is documented, it goes into CO2. The last test we would do is the Kirby Bauer. It's done on an HTM plate and put into CO2. And for purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to show how to set that up. Okay, so to read the porphyrin tests, we have to be in a dark room. So we're in the incubator and the UV light is turned on and placed close to the tubes. You don't want to have the UV light, of course, uh, pointing at you, your, your hand or your eyes. And you'll see that the QC positive is fluorescing a nice pink color. The QC negative is unchanged. My unknown porphyrin is also unchanged. So based on these results, the unknown is read as porphyrin negative. So a negative porphyrin, a BAP staff streak that shows non-heme satelliting is equal to Haemophilus influenza.